So I'll begin with the argument that the directors are having. Um, nobody wanted to be a director of the Steinhoff board when the accounting irregularities transpired. Everybody was like, whoa, no, this is a hot potato. I am not touching it. So the, the people that you got on board, you obviously had to pay them more because, I mean, you couldn't find anyone else. These are the best people, Steinhoff has told us. We heard from Christo Visa in Parliament earlier this year. I mean, why shouldn't they be paid this money that they're asking for? No, I mean, uh, we should not pay them because in the first place, those were the people that, that under their watch, the company have ended up destroying so much wealth in terms of the share price drop from 45 rand to less than 10 rand. Okay. So whenever there is a situation where the remuneration of directors and non-executive directors have been determined, they normally link it to the performance of the share price. You know, so no, but we've added value to the company and therefore they justify that they must now get so much million rand, you see. Now you find the company destroys so much wealth and value of the share that, I mean, look at the American banks, look at the other shareholders, mm -hmm. look at our shareholders. Mm -hmm. We have lost so much value, we can't sell our shares. We must now hang in there. You know, and hope that the share price are going to recover. Okay. And now they want to go and give themselves. I mean, the chairperson wants to get now of the board must get five hundred thousand euros. You still have to multiply that with for fifteen sure. per year. Then they also want to pay them on top of that for attendance for every meeting, so they can just as well now have a meeting every second day. I mean, and Dennis, let's, let's differentiate that. So it's not all the directors that were um, on, 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 on that board that you know, oversaw the, 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 the scandal or the alleged accounting fraud that did take place. So maybe if we divide it, we say that if you are a new director to that board, then it's okay for you to be paid this. But if you like perhaps uh, Johan van Zeil, who was still a member on that board when uh, Marcus Uyster was doing what he did to you know destroy the company, then maybe your package isn't uh, just should we differentiate the two? No, the point is basically this. It's not only this Johan, Dr. Johan van Seyl. It's the, the chairperson of the, the, the audit committee. You know, audit committee and its internal committee is there to work with the external audit committee. You see, to make sure that the data and the information that has been given to the investors and to shareholders, okay, are proper, it's clean up. It's, it's not people that doesn't have experience. It's people that have knowledge. You know, the guy from Mr. Um, Boyson come from, from Absa Bank. You see, they know the accountancy procedures. They know what they've been doing. So what they are doing is they appointed the Deloitte to, to do this investigation. And this investigation is going on for some time. I mean, our position is quite clear. We are going to take action. We are speaking to other investors that is investing. And with the PIC, I just got off the telephone now. Mm -hmm. I spoke to the to the CEO of the PIC mm -hmm. to say, look, we want to meet with him because when that meeting is going to take place in Amsterdam and there's going to be a link up from Cape Town, we're going to rock their world for them because those people don't have any ethical values. They came and sat in front of the portfolio committee, you know, with faces and now we can't talk about this because this is going to uh, implicate us in this and this and this. For us as a trade union, for us, the only thing, the only thing is count is what is in the interest of our members, it's their money, and therefore we must take action. But Linus, I'm sure you must also understand that time is, you know, I I is money. And that these directors, they have taken their time to take on a very big responsibility of trying to uh, steady the waters there at Steinhoff. Should they not at least be compensated for do it providing a service? Sure. Is is, 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 is that not the question yes, to no. say, let them be compensated, just but, not but so look, much? Look, look, it's not about not getting compensation. It's about the improvement on the compensation that they are going to get. In other words, they were receiving X, okay? Everybody else, including the shareholders and the investors, took a haircut. Mm. In fact, they cut their heads off, right? They lost money. I can tell you now, the European Central Bank, had to sell their shares because the company status have also been downgraded to junk and the European Union can't have on their portfolio an uh, asset that is classified as junk, mm. you see. So, I mean, I can give you the information. A lot of these investors have lost money. Now, these guys come and say, okay, 
We are not happy with what we were given because we had to have more meetings and therefore you have to pay us more. That is ridiculous. Mm. I mean, there's so many lessons that can be drawn from uh, Steinhoff, and I think that it's lessons we're going to continue to learn as uh, South Africa, uh, uh, you know, as, as the story continues to develop. But perhaps I'm thinking in my mind that uh, maybe when it comes to situations like this, whereby the demise of a company is caused by, you know, internal uh, uh, management, maladministration, essentially greed, then the people or directors who were on the company who did oversee the program process, I mean, given that it was their fiduciary duty to make sure that such things doesn't happen on their watch, but the people on it, if they do choose to stay to help calm the waters, uh, should it be voluntary? Look, whether they stay or whether they go, the long hand of the law must prosecute. You mm. see the same thing happen in the fact of corporate South Africa. Here we had a rogue president, Jacob Zuma, he deliberately undermined the country by putting the wrong people into mm. positions. What happened to him? The con there's consequences. So the, he got removed by his own party. There the, p the Hawks are going to prosecute him. You see, mm. this thing about white collar crime are being treated differently from other kinds of crime is unacceptable. Mm. Because you, know, you will destroy the whole system that people need to have confidence. You need to have ethical leadership. You need to have responsible leadership. And that is what we expect from these people. But every time continuously, they're still now trying to cover up the whole thing. Mm. And they're using delaying tactics to come up with the truth. And so they're using this auditing firm that's busy with its investigation. How can an investigation take that long? Mm. I mean, and also, uh, as some would say, the sheer arrogance of, you know, the former boss, Marcus Yosta, to respectfully decline an appearance in Parliament to essentially explain his role because he says he's no longer the, the boss. The Hawks must arrest him. You see, the evidence is there. FEDUSA and our biggest union, the Public Servants Association, the PSA, we went to their offices in Stellenbosch. We collected all the minutes of the meetings from 2002. Their lawyers were working with us. We were want to give those documents over to the Hawks and say, guys, you've got the responsibility in terms of the Constitution to prosecute. Mm. Prosecute these people, what is the problem? 